Today on LBC, the Home Secretaries went up against each other. The actual Home Secretary, James Cleverly, and the Shadow Home Secretary, Yvette Cooper. What I liked about them being in the same room at the same time was that normally, during debates in the Houses of the Parliament, Yvette would only get one or two questions and James would always get the final word. Here, it was Cooper that was able to call out James's lies in real time and it got him so rattled that towards the end, he even started complaining that she had the last word every time. And I don't think he's quite used to that. She calls him out on his claim that Europe would send us 100,000 immigrants, a figure that has just been picked out of thin air, just to frighten people. She called him out on the absolute failure of the Rwanda scheme, a gimmick that's cost us £300 million and sent two volunteers and a load of home secretaries. This was a problem engineered by the Conservatives, probably to use as a platform to run the election on. But it kind of got out of hand, and now they've kind of lost control and don't quite know how to fix it. They've been flapping their arms around panicking because they don't know what to do to bring it back under control. And instead of using the money wisely, they've just kind of blown it all on Rwanda. So then they've realised it's not going to work and that's why Sunak called the election early. So here's Yvette Cooper calling out James Cleverley's nonsense. We've now seen 50,000 arrivals under a Prime Minister who last January pledged he would stop the boats. That is one of those classic cases of failure you can imagine, isn't it? Well... The, the small what boats, else could you characterise it as? So the small boats phenomenon is an international uh, uh, challenge. When I speak to the interior ministers across Europe, this is something that we're all facing. And indeed, in terms of, uh, can, can, you know, let, let, let's look at the, the broader situation. In terms of asylum applications per capita, the UK is, I think, about... 20th but, in Europe. Okay. But, no, but, but, and, and but so this Mr. is the point. So, pledged, so it Mr. is. Cleverly. Yes, and we are committed to doing so. This party has brought in three new laws that were all of them supposedly going to, to stop boat crossings, and in fact, they've all just made the chaos worse. All right, they before have we failed. go to the caller, you did want to register a challenge. James Cleverly. Yeah, so this new border command, what will be the relationship between that supposedly new border command and SBOC? It needs to be part of it, but it's only one small part of it. I've been to the... So, no, to I know, so the small, I'm the small sorry, boats, there is, a, there is a small boats operational command. Thank you. It, so it does, do, it does do different? good work, so and I've been to that? meet its... I've been to see its uh, control centre. But it, all it does is it looks at the operations in the channel itself. What it doesn't do is so have is this proper networks to? right across Europe. It doesn't have the work to go to Mr. after Cleverly's the criminal point. gangs, so it is additional. So ours is a proper overarching border security strategy and command because we know from a whole series of independent reports that border security is too fragmented and too broken. So all it's just got, another squad then. No, no, all they've got is a small, limited programme around the operations in the channel. It's good, it's important, but it's not enough. Yvette Cooper's given you a frank answer to your question. I, I, I don't believe her. And the reason is because this is the first time... I've asked this question for weeks and weeks and weeks about whether the whether the small boats operation command commanded by a British Army general with contacts uh, and uh, an operational uh, capability in the UK in the Channel and in France closely integrated with French law enforcement and okay. um, border facilities. Only along the channel. It is, uh, this is the, literally the first time we've had any kind of clarity. And when I've asked before whether the and, whether Small Boats Operation Command... And the grounds for which you don't believe her briefly are... Because what she says now, what the Labour Party says now, is in complete contradiction to what they've done is that true, time yes, and time and time It's simply not again. true. I mean, we're not, clearly we're not in power at the moment, so no. we're having to cope with right. the Conservatives' chaos and mess. But this but, is how we set this out last year, and it's what we've continue okay. being arguing for what James is doing is simply not enough Look, it is not working and we can see I, it's not working I hear you I introduced a series of visa restrictions because legal migration was too high and introduced a minimum salary threshold yep. I restricted the number of I restricted uh, the, uh, foreign students bringing family members when they come to the UK and every single one of those measures was criticized and opposed at the time That's not by true. the by the labor party That's so not true. so that's, so they talk. Just made that so okay. they talk. We'll so back. they yep. talk. They talk about a thousand fewer people will be eligible to well, come under the arrangement that I have put in place compared with previously, l and this was opposed by Labour over that's and not over. Let's clarify over again. the idea of this that's salary cap. But yeah, straight yeah, away, no. you said I think it's, it's, not, it's not true. And James keeps saying this, but I mean, uh, you know, uh, it, it's simply made up. 
I mean, it simply made up what he said. Some of the measures that so you didn't criticise the measures. The measures, that, measures so that some I of the measures, in. some of the measures you brought in, are the ones we called for. So we called for the ending to the twenty percent discount, wage discount, unfair wage discount yep. on overseas recruitment. It was introduced by the Conservatives after twenty nineteen. We called for its abolition, and eventually, after four years, the Conservatives finally agreed to abolish it. We called for the salary uh, threshold for work visas to go up because it hadn't been updated for very many years. Eventually, the Conservatives did do so. We have supported measures. Uh, so some of the measures that we have said we will the salary continue them. So you're, you're, you're genuinely said, saying Labour did not... Because this is going to be very... We Labor said that did not, we would increase... That not, we should increase the salary threshold. But are you saying Labour did not criticise when I increased the salary threshold? Oh, we've did supported you, it. Have we had any votes in Parliament on it, say, James? Uh, so are you saying that Labour did not criticise the measures uh, I took about the uh, threshold for spouse visas. Are oh, you well, you've changed you those, haven't you? I, I, you you yes, had I've, to change... Yes, brought, you did. I have changed you redu- those. Yeah, but you had to also reverse those. your plans. No, I haven't. Because, yes, you did. No, I didn't. You have, you reversed it because no, you were originally supposed to do something else and you reversed no, it. No, I didn't. So, look, there is a, you know, right. it, James no, is just are very making to... things up no, and... Are... Look, Actually, are, what we've said is we will continue with the visa uh, controls because it, we do need to have proper visa controls in place. But as, as says, none, none of this these addresses... Are very easy to the first time in the history of the NHS we have a long-term workforce plan to make sure that we train the medical professionals that we, that we need. A thousand, the number of apprenticeships, something again, which the, the Labour Party will After uh, undo. Years. How many people are currently on the Bibby Stockholm, Home Secretary? I don't have the I, I don't have the precise uh, Do you have an idea? figures for today. Um, I don't want to guess, but I, I don't I don't have the updated figures. I'll is be... it working? How is that suddenly going to resolve the situation of that Cooper? It's a cross border police and Which we have. intelligence and security Which uh, investigators have. on a much bigger scale. On top of that's existing, that's true. on top that's of. Hang on a second, James. Let's, James. 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 let's listen to Yvette Cooper. She was she allowed you to speak. If I can, Mr. Cleverly, thank you, uh, Yvette Cooper. Uh, on a, it's on a much bigger scale than these current operations to go after the criminal gangs. As part of a proper strategy, we need the new security agreement and information sharing with European counterparts that, unfortunately, the Conservatives have abandoned. And we also need new counter-terror powers so that they can do uh, much faster uh, search and uh, seizure as well uh, to be able to use those powers to go after organised immigration crime. Uh, And we need this as part of an overarching strategy that takes those gang networks seriously. So far, I mean... Seriously, a BBC journalist did better at tracking down one of the gang leaders than the current operations that James is boasting about. So we have to do it better. James keeps boasting about this Rwanda scheme. They've been running this scheme okay. for two and a half years, and so far they've sent what so two the... volunteers? Perhaps James can clarify. Is it two volunteers? And they've sent three hundred you, million you pounds to Rwanda. So we should be working with other countries. Oh. So we should be working in partnership, and we'll always look at anything that works. But what we won't do is send three hundred million pounds for well, two volunteers and three home secretaries, okay, which is about from all your, that the, the Conservatives from your have actually sent. That is what we have got. We have got gimmicks at the well, moment, and they're failing. So three hundred million pounds to send two people to, to Rwanda. You've not got a clue what those countries. So might be. we used to have the Dublin Agreement. The arrangement that you're talking about will inevitably mean the UK becomes a net recipient of illegal migrants. We estimate about 100,000 additional Oh, this is just people. invented. This but is just po- fantasy. This is, is just it, total garbage. No, I mean, seriously. Oh, no, hang on. no he, he shouldn't be allowed to just, you know, basically make stuff up or tell lies. In I mean, that is, is just making, not on. What is he making up, just to clarify? He's got, wait, where's this 100,000? What is this? This is just garbage. Yeah, well, the, the It's simple, invented, isn't it, James? The simple fact of the matter is mm. the numbers in Europe are significantly higher than in the UK. How long would it take for those 50,000 people to be processed, Yvette Cooper? So we we don't know the full timetable because we don't know exactly what we would inherit. When we had looked at this previously, we had done some assessments which suggested it might take around a year to clear the backlog, but yeah. I have to be honest, I don't know what a Labour government would inherit Do in terms of the state of the Home Office and the state of the backlog because they're not being honest with us okay. about how many people are in these hotels. And bear in mind, they enter hotels, but then they never leave okay. under okay. their system. Okay. They're not taking Ms. decisions. Ms. Cleverly, it's like Hotel California. And thank you for... That James Cleverly is conning people. He's not sending 50,000 people to Rwanda. So far, he has managed to send two volunteers to Rwanda in two and a half years. At that rate, frankly, it would be centuries 
days before they had even managed to make any inroads into the backlog. It is a con. Listen, That's the backdrop. They have been resistant to having those serious discussions about the kind of information sharing, the criminal intelligence that we need to work together on. James Matchley, you know, may well agree with me on this one. His problem is that Rishi Sunak doesn't. All right, let's go to another call. Oh, hang on, Nick. She always gets the last word. OK, go ahead. She always gets the I'm last so word. Sorry, go ahead if you She's feel talking that. about international... And, when, and, and this is another example of where Labour words and Labour actions are completely okay. contradictory. So I've talked to because, parents right across the country who are devastated I, n- by knife crime, and I really think this could be something we should have cross-party agreement on. It should be a moral mission for all of us. Briefly, Mr Clover, I've got one more question. And in Labour-run London, the actions that you need, so failure to recruit officers, failure to retain officers, failure to support stop and search has seen... I just think right. this oh, is an okay. insult no, to families uh, again, across oh, the no, country it's not, who well, are I'm, also I'm, seeing okay. rising knife crime. I know so both of you are committed to stopping. All, I know always, both of you always trying to get the last no. dig in. The point is, actions this. speak louder than okay. words. I think it's in the public interest for people to know in the run-up to an election whether people involved in the election have also been betting on it and have been potentially being investigated. That's why we think there should be transparency. This does have the real feel right. of party gate to it. It's just, you know, uh, one rule for, for them, not another right. for everybody else. It needs to be investigated, but there has to be some transparency. My th- Keir Starmer was investigated for having beers in a party during COVID, wasn't he? Well, like, I don't know you'd want to go back on Partygate, would you? No, it's but he... Best to, no, no, as soon as yeah, he brought yeah. it up, he, he was... You know, the, I mean, seriously... But he was investigated as well, wasn't double he? Double standards no, he was for investigated James. I think it's really damaging and it really undermines public trust. The link in the description is for the full interview, if you'd like to watch. It's around about half an hour to 40, 45 minutes-ish, but it's kind of worth a watch, to be fair. It's got some good questions. Nick Ferrari did kind of tickle James's tummy quite a bit, and he was more a little bit more brutal with Vivek Cooper, but that's kind of understandable. He is a Tory after all. And it was only a few weeks ago that James Clevy actually had another car crash interview, so I'm going to have a laugh and watch that next. Video's on screen now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>